The human species have been through many revolutions. The uh, Industrial Revolution, the Enlightenment, and so forth. Dr. Yuval Hariri, in his book Sapiens, speaks about one revolution that stands out in human history as a revolution being a bit more than any other revolution. And that, he says, is the cognitive revolution happening sometime 70,000 years ago. At that time, the Homo sapiens were not the only humanoid on planet Earth. There were about five other species. And due to circumstances that obviously are a bit hard to unravel, there's only one species left, namely us. And our sort of dabbling in what happened there can be debated and discussed. Uh, but thinking in those terms, for me at least, becomes a bit... Uh, fills me with a bit of anxiety, I would say. So what would differentiate the Homo sapiens from any other species? Well, we are really good at cooperation, but so are ants. We use tools, but crows, apes and other species use tools as well. What seems to separate us are the excellent communication skills of our species. In combination with using tools, telling tales, and being flexible. The tools that we design through our stories store knowledge. And we build tools upon tools upon tools built by stories. Again, new tools forming based on previous stories. And as time goes by, our tools become ever more changing and adapted to the needs and purposes of our time. So, as our culture evolved over time, our stories have taken over a majority of our daily lives. Rarely do most of us today actively think of the most basic needs, of course, given that we're not in war, poverty, or struck by disease. But instead, we're taking to think about concepts and ideas that are pure creations of the human mind. Come to think of it, nearly anything that we perceive as being important in our lives around us are just thoughts of imagination. Things like money, companies, law, democracy. All such things are concepts designed by us, forming a part of our culture. And so, in a sense, it is with tools as well. Indeed, we use tools of yesterday. We use wheels, paper, clocks, lamps. Well, not that many clocks anymore, but you get the point. Uh, and all those things, they are, they're really important. And so has the more advanced tools have become today as well, such as computers and things of electronic character. We use these tools and they take an ever more active role in our daily lives and our conversations with each other. And where before, our main use of communication or tool for communication between each other were the voice, today, our communication is mediated by various types of technologies. From the SMS to the email, to the phone call or the hangout, Tools mediate our communication. They mediate our thoughts in more complex well ways, and in a sense, our technology in itself is some kind of alibi of interaction, therefore being here. So, where will this place us in the future? What will become of human interaction, 
and storytelling as technology evolves. What is interaction really in a complex technological society? If technology mediates communication, who's the author, the bearer of communication, or the designer of the medium which communication takes place through? Perhaps both, some would argue. Some believe that the next major revolution for humanity since the cognitive revolution will take place in the coming century. Over the past decades, work to understand the human brain, our genome, our epigenomics, has taken enormous leaps forward. Where it was near impossible to design or alter DNA 20 years ago, it's become commonplace. In competitions and meetings such as the International El Engineered Machine Competition, Genetically Engineered Machine Competition, IGEM, undergraduate students from all over the world compete in designing new th synthetic life forms, and in computer labs and neurocognitive scientist labs, much done much is done to understand how our brain actually functions. And gradually, we're starting to see possibilities in gene therapies and other transformative technologies where it may be possible to alter the DNA of an individual to create specific outcomes in a, well, potentially safe and hopefully secure manner. Uh, it could be said that this is a great revolution by some and by others, a disaster for mankind. Perhaps the coming century is the time when Homo sapiens leaves the ongoing evolutionary process and takes control of its own evolution through biological and technological means. What would that world be like? How would we perceive ourselves in such a world? Would it be the emergence of a new form of sapiens? Who knows? It's at any rate ours to shape. One way to discuss the future of humanity and the state of life as we know it on Earth today is through experimentation. And this is what CN Laboratoriet, which me and Robert and Michael and Karin today are a part of and about. In the piece that we have received grants from Kulturbrigan to explore, called a coded reality, we want to explore what it is to be human, what it is to communicate through new and mind-altering ways. So in this experiment, what we want to do is that we want to connect six participants to a neuro interface, which converts data of their frontal lobe into from el electronical impulses in the brain to various forms of light. The light emitted and generated from the participants generated thoughts will inform a storyteller who is reading an interactive narrative. The uh, work carried out in order to do this is done together with interaction designers, neuroscientists, psychologists, authors, dramatists, prop makers, and all kinds of competencies. And it's the work in these crossroads that we find really stimulating and a pleasure to be a part of. <laughs>